Hey guys, I'm gonna go through a detailed tutorial right now because one of our users sent me an email saying that he has some trouble with Shot Tracer, um, the camera tracking system. And yes, it might seem a little bit tricky in the moment. Um, so let me go through this example video, what he shot on, I believe his iPhone, um, or a different camera, but that's not uh, the matter because the system works on iPhone and any other DSLR cameras. So basically what we want to do, if it's a pretty stable video, we can run the ball flight tracking algorithm. If it's not a stable video, press the square here to cancel tracking. Um, because if, if, if the video is, is shaky, the system will not track it well. In this case, we saw that um, the we, we actually saw that the, 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 the video was tracked well, um, but as you'll know, because he using, uh, he's moving the camera around, um, we need to stabilize that line. And what he basically complained uh, to us about is that he had trouble creating the stable line here. So I want to show you how to get it done so you don't run into the same kind of issues. And the main issue with, with what he had in mind, I can see it straight away. You see the golfer moving into the shot and he probably set a couple of markers around the area that after when, that when after the golf shot uh, has landed, the golfer goes, picks up his tee and there's probably a marker somewhere here that will mess up the, the tracking of the line. I'll show you that right now. So what we'll do is, we'll go to a couple of frames before the ball is hit and we start setting our tracking markers. Let me go make this into full screen. So I'm setting my tracking markers here all over the place. I'm trying to stay away from the area of the golfer. I can go behind him, um, but I wanna make sure that I don't, I'm not in any area where his shape might move in or his club might move over. So, and also he's got logos in this video already. So I want to stay away from any of those logos because they are not the original scene. Um, therefore they won't be tracking. So I need to make sure the system does not uh, interfere with any of that. I can actually, if the clouds are mo not moving fast, I can even mark in the clouds if I want to. Uh, here, the, those clouds are very stationary, they're far away. So I'm just marking some positions that I feel like are, are high contrast positions um, uh, low cut grass, high cut grass, that, that cart path, and then a couple of areas in the distance where I know the camera will be zooming in um, after he, he hit the shot. So I wanna put a couple more here and a couple. Uh, I wanna work myself back towards, to, from, from all the way in the horizon to all the way where the golfer is. And once I've done that, I simply press track markers right here on the bottom left, and I wait a couple of seconds until um, the, the blue dot uh, stops being grayed out. And now I can slowly use the slider and see how the, the, the tracking, what the tracking quality is. So I can see like, oh, okay, great. This is tracking really well. There's nothing that's happening, but hey, can you see that? You see that marker right here? And this guy is about to move into the marker with his head. So watch what happens. You see how that marker just starts jumping all over the place and actually, I also noticed just now there's a marker on his head right here. Uh, didn't, uh, I, I, ah, okay, here it is, look. So I had a marker somewhere here. Let's see here what happened. So we have the markers. And then, so we have two markers that appear here for some reason. Ah, you know why they appear here? Because his club right here, you have those two markers here by the tree. His club moves into those markers and they get pushed off into, into the right-hand side because they start tracking the club. So, so that's, that's exactly why he had trouble with the line. Um, I'm gonna press done right now and you'll see what happens. So what happens if this is the case is he hits a nice drive, it's all stable, but no, it's not stabilized because the markers have moved. Um, yeah, so all we need to do right now is go into camera tracking and then slide, use the slider to move the slider to the position before those, those two tracker move and just delete them. So I press shift and then I drag the mouse and I just highlight those two markers right here and I press delete. And now I have to press track markers in order to save that change. Now it's saved, great. 
So now they should be, yeah, now there's no more of that crazy jumping. Now we move closer to the, now we zoom in. And if you like, for example, here in this situation, if you lose markers, uh, because you are zooming into the scene, you can start adding new markers. Um, here I added a marker to the tree. Um, I'm going to add a marker to the light post. I'm going to add markers. Generally, I'm just adding a couple of new markers because we have zoomed into the picture, meaning that um, some of the older markers, they might be already cut out because they're out of the scene. So I'll just set a couple of new ones. I just want to make sure that there's at least a couple of markers. But again, you can see here the guy is moving into the shot and what happens? Two of the markers now have have a move their their location so what what do we need to do once again we need to make sure that we delete those markers before the golfer moves into into them and they start tracking him so i'm just going to delete them and what i can do now is i can because i've deleted two markers if i wanted to but in this scene we have, a, we have plenty of markers already but if i wanted to i can set a couple more markers away from the golfer away from where i see him moving in and then I just press track markers again. Uh, I wait a couple of seconds and I can use this once I can use the slider again. And here you can see, all right, that's that looks good. Great, perfect. No more markers move. But one thing you'll notice is that when I zoom out, the markers that I've set previously in, in his uh, T-box area, they have disappeared. And that's because we have moved, we have basically zoomed in they were deleted after zooming in. Now when I zoom out, when I start, start zooming out slowly, I want to set markers again uh, while I zoom out. So I set two markers here. I'm, I'll set another one here. Again, away from the golfer. I can actually send, set one behind the golfer because I know he's not going to move in. He's not going to move there. So I set track markers once again. And now I keep on zooming out. And I, I'll keep on adding markers while I zoom out. And I just want to make sure that I set those markers away from the golfer. So he does never, he never, or his club, his shadow, anything that's not camera related movement ever moves into one of those markers, as you can see here. Um, one thing I've just noticed because there is the logo right here on the left hand side, seems like some of those markers have been moved by the logo. Oh yeah, it does. So look at this. So when we moved in here on the left hand side, those markers, I have to delete all of them actually, because that logo just um, messes up the markers. So I have to kind of redo the whole thing here. Um, yeah, so definitely if you're doing any of that work, uh, make sure you don't put the logos um, before you try to add traces to your videos because they'll mess it up. So I've, I've removed them. This looks good, this looks good, this looks good. That's fine. And now I just need to add a couple more markers on the way back, right here, track them. He hasn't, he, hasn't, he hasn't made it easy for me, let's put it this way, with the logos in the video. But, uh, but that's nothing that the app can't handle we just need to know what to do right here. Uh, I don't want to put it on here because his his shadow is moving moving into this into this area. No, um, actually, I'll just leave them for now. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, nicely done. All right, that that looks good to me. Oh, oh, here, that's interesting. Look, there's a right here. There's a car that drives by. In this, in this scenario, there's a car that drives by and I just noticed that. You see that marker right here? This one right here will probably move once the car starts driving by. Yeah, um, so, so he, he, that's, that's something he, he added to the video. So you might need to remove this marker as well right here. Um, but let's, let's, let's check it out. Another thing that, that's good to note is um, this slider right here comes in very handy because when you use the slider, uh, the line is not stabilized, but what we use the slider for is to find out what moment the ball landed in. So the flight time was badly calculated in this video, I must say, admit and say. So we'll, let, let's put it to, let's say, 5.5 seconds. Press enter once you've done that. And you see that slider right here. Um, I want, I can see the ball landing, let's say, in this frame, right here in this frame. So I want to make sure that 
this dot, that's actually the landing dot right here. That's the landing dot of when the ball lands. So I wanna make sure that I'm changing flight time. I'm increasing flight time. And now I've increased the flight time. I wanna to get to that frame right here. So I'm gonna go to 5.5.7, 5 one more. You see right now I'm, I'm at the frame. So this marker right here is at 5.7, I'm sorry, 5.8 in the flight time. So that's actually the frame where the ball lands. So I can nicely match the landing frame with my flight time by just simply uh, changing the flight time in seconds here to the moment where I see the ball land in the video. That, 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 that's a really good thing, but, but unfortunately at the moment, this, this preview is not yet stabilized. You'll actually have to play back the video using the play button and that is stabilized. I'm just not sure if this will work well while I'm screen recording. I'm not sure if the um, computer can handle all the workload. Let's see. Oh yeah, it does. Does does it nicely? Just a little s slowed down, but yeah, does it nicely? As you can see, um, the the landing spot is a little bit too high, so I want to pull that down. And here is another good um, note on 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 the system is you might want to ask like, okay, how do I set the landing spot for the 3D tracking? Because if I move the slider, obviously here the whole camera moves. And if I now set the landing spot based on the camera movement, it's gonna be completely wrong in the preview. In the preview, it's, I mean, in the exported video, so it's gonna move somewhere. It's gonna land somewhere down here. Um, so that that's a good thing to know. And basically what you need to know with this is you need to send, you need to set the landing spot based on your impact frame. So you see that dot here on the bottom, you have two dots in the timeline. You have the um, impact frame dot, then a blue line that continues all the way to the landing frame dot. So these are the two dots. And in order to set um, the landing uh, position of the line, you want, you want to make sure that you take the landing, uh, I mean the impact frame dot as your reference. And based off of this, you'll basically just set yourself the landing spot right here. And this will be the landing spot in the 3D, I mean, in the camera track video. So um, let's see that. So we have the golfer hitting the shot. And now what you'll notice is before we were like, the landing dot was like somewhere up in the, in, in, up here. And now it's perfectly down on the fairway. So, so that, that, that looks great to me. And, um, and yeah, so, so that, that, that's really it. So what I want you to take away from this tutorial video is make sure that, yeah, you don't have any logos that are stationary in a moving video. And then when you have a moving object in the video, like the golfer or the golf club, uh, make sure that you check out, um, the, 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 the positions of those dots and you use the slider to figure out if any of those dots are moving because of the golfer golfer's head like here you see that again we have one more dot here to remove because so we added a dot here but um we have to remove this one because his head moves right into the dot so i press shift and i i removed it so i press track markers again i've done that i'm i'm gonna re reach relook um relook the scene again reslide use the slider here uh so i'm gonna add some more markers in this area again and now we'll move back. So I'll move some markers, just move, add markers to where the golfer has no chance of ever um, ste stepping foot on. Or like if you like now club twirls and for some reason the club hits one of the markers, yeah, it will track the marker as well. We, we once mentioned the car that moves in the, in the backdrop here. So I'm gonna remove that marker as well because I don't want that marker to move. Instead, I set one below the tree. I'll set another one here. I, th I think this looks good. I'll just track those markers again. Um, I'll set some more in the area of the T box. I'll track those markers again. This looks really good to me. Yeah, great stuff. And once this arrow comes up, it actually moves one of those markers. I'll just remove them, those markers here and I'll set some on the below the arrow. So once again, Make sure you don't add any graphics before you do the camera tracking. This, this way, uh, you don't you don't have to like um, worry about those dots uh, mess, messing up your scene. That looks great. Let's take another preview. 
we'll preview that shot yeah everything is nicely tracked and again i'm using a screen recording here so it's going to be a little bit jumpy but the final video i'll i'll, I'll add the final video in just be, um, after this tutorial video so you'll get to see what it what it comes out to and then if you wanted to you could add some um some overlays some distance overlays uh some apex overlays uh, uh you can add uh cast a shadow you could even do uh masking you could actually mask the line if you wanted to like um but if somebody hits it behind a tree for example you could mask it so it appears to be behind a tree we don't have a we don't have any of that in this scene so yeah um as usual if there's any questions or you guys want to get in touch please email us and we'll be happy to help we'll probably do some more of those tutorials because that's a brand new feature as you can see it is still in beta so we're adding more um, more features to the system. It currently only works with um, the shot tracer, and we do, however, recommend line molding for the entire thing. We in this in this case we actually had keyframes to base um, base the tracking off because the camera was held still while um, while the shot came about. And uh, but sometimes if you move the camera a lot, it's not going to track. So um, line molding might be the best fit for for the for the videos that are handheld and yeah so give us uh, shoot us an email if you have any questions and we'll be happy to help thank you oh, that's a nice shot yeah that'll do it's a par five right this is yeah. a par four so yeah, this is a 